that's that's pretty good. Reminds me of uh, one of the first episodes of Captain Scarlet. <laughs> Go on. Where there's a, uh, I think there's like a bomb hidden somewhere in the city, and the only thing they know is that a guy who happened to be in the same place um, ha- heard Big Ben strike thirteen. Okay. And like that that's all he knows. He doesn't know where he is. And they say, Aha! He's here and they go and find it. And right. they just don't explain how they work out exactly where he must be. Because there are you know, he knows he's in some kind of car park, but there's so many car parks all over where are they? All over uh, anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> Because he was listening to the radio. Yeah. Like the radio has Big Ben striking mm. um, for midnight. And it strikes 13. It's, Ooh, where is he? And so they work out exactly where he is. And they go and get him. And, and then it's just at the end. And they're all sat around in a restaurant. It's like, how did you work out where he was? And it's like, ah, I'll tell you. Because it's midnight. Someone open the window and put the radio on. And it turns out it's somewhere that is like exactly like 300 meters from Big Ben or something <laughs> so that uh, the clock strikes on the radio are one out of sequence oh okay, okay. so it was actually 12 it was actually midnight yeah so the um, so he hears them all strike and then oh, after they've finished on the radio they're still getting here yeah and yeah no, I, I like that Incidentally, we're talking about Smeagol and all that. This is Moria, right? This is very Moria More or looking. less. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mine, this isn't a mine, it's a tomb, etc. That's a good bit in Blackadder. Oh, mine. Oh. Where are we, George? Well, it says mine, so presumably it belongs to the guy who made the map. <laughs> <laughs> no, George, I think that means we're in a minefield. Oh, he owns the field as well. <laughs> oh, I miss Black Adam. <laughs> if only someone hadn't stolen my DVDs. I, what are you talking it's about? It's not you. Oh, okay. After I lent them to you, <laughs> I lent, that, does, I've, I've said it before. After I lent them to you, I lent them to someone else, and she never gave them back. Oh yeah, doesn't that speak volumes about me that I immediately got defensive <laughs> about that? Because <laughs> of all the stuff I have stolen off you. Not off me. Uh, yeah. Just don't stop off Peter. <laughs> now I've got... What have I got? I mean, I've got Old Boy, which I've had for a while. Yeah, but that's you're borrowing uh, it because you're going to watch it. It's not like you've just moved across the country and cut off all contact. Oh. Well, fun I thing, haven't yet. Fun thing about Old Boy, I didn't know that was the progenitor of that one fight scene in the hallway. Yeah. From, I've seen from, a lot uh, of... From Daredevil? No, the, the one where it's like shot... Wait, have you not seen Old Boy yet? We can't describe this to you. You've got to watch it for yourself. No, I mean, it, are you really but, comparing it to that famous bit in the Daredevil series? Possibly. A lot of series and movies have done... Can you describe the one from Daredevil? Um, it's like it's all one shot and there's guys getting just... Half the time you can't see Daredevil, he's just kicking guys out of doorways and things. And is it... Walks like, into the next is one. Is it shot like a side-scrolling beat em up? No. No. Okay. That's the Old Boy shot. Oh wow! Okay. It's it's a it, it's a good long scene of where I go this yeah. guy fighting his way Let's down a corridor, <laughs> and oh. it's shot like Streets yeah. of Rage, yeah. or Final Fight. Insert, ah. you know. Oh wow! Okay. Cool. And then a, it's it's like the bike slide from Akira. Everyone has done that, but it's the bike slide from Akira. Yeah, because it made it. Yeah, should probably watch that movie. Yeah, when you finished with Red Cliff. Uh, yeah, I, I am watching Red Cliff. Red Cliff is great. It's pretty good. It's Dynasty Warriors the movie, kind of. Basically. As in. With John Woo. Basically. Here's know, one dude fighting a thousand dudes. Uh, yes. yes. Cool. Which is say, it and is also dope. the same story that Dynasty Warriors is adapted yeah. from. Okay. Yes. So it is romance, you know, the uh, Romance of the Three yeah, Kingdoms. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same characters. And it turns out, well, I've not read the original, but if Red Cliff is anything like it, it looks like Dynasty Warriors did a very good job of adapting, you know, the ability of all the main characters to kill thousands of people. Which is kind of surprising, because you think that'd just be, you know, 
because they're Muso games and that that was what the gameplay is of those games. I, I would I think say, it'd be a gameplay contrivance, but like actually the, the it fits. Sto with the, story the story might yeah. be incredibly sober, no one actually dies, there's not even a war. I don't know, I've not read it. No, it is. But, uh, honestly, it is kind of a lot similar to Reckless in terms of what happens. Well, yeah. there's a lot of different campaigns, but one of the campaigns seems pretty similar. Mm. Where Cow Cow is the. or Sao Sao is the main villain or whatever. Uh, but all the dialogue is incredibly poorly translated. Or, or either poorly translated or just bad generally. Yeah. <laughs> and like really, you know, schlocky. And... Oh, I just. <laughs> That's not fair. You know when you're like you're planning a bad joke for ages. Yes. And there's, there's a scene in Red Cliff where someone has stolen a water buffalo, and I know that this scene ends with them finding the water buffalo. And I previously had a thing with Simon mentioning about you know cow cow because it's spelled cow cow, but I you know mentioned L, but they they pronounce it sow sow in this, so I assume that's correct. And he's like, no, nope, no, nope, it's cow cow. And then the water buffalo yeah. turns up, and I'm like, ah, that must be this cow cow I've heard so much yeah. about. And it's just that yeah. I was planning that for like 10 minutes. It's so why you wanted to watch it. <laughs> Most likely. A little bit. <laughs> you have collected 10 sound credits and messed with the current subtitle. Yeah, that's why I, I was, you didn't see me, but I had a good little chuckle there when I heard uh, whoever that was. Narrating. That would be that. Kylina. Uh, she's Unle dead. It unless, continues to be weird that she's narrating. Unless the role has been taken over by somebody else at this point, that was Kylina. Okay. Yeah, because so I'm just thinking, yeah, that's something you're going to have to subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> you what is this place and why is it so bright? I don't know. I think we're under the big, cool looking tower that has been. This. You know, that's been teased for most of the game. What was that from? Was that from Hit Missile, maybe? I don't know. What? We don't rightly know. It was some catchphrase know. from something I used to watch when I was a kid, but I don't know if it was like... I remember people saying it, but I can't remember where from. So Hit Missile, maybe, was part of this Saturday morning kids programming segment. Mm -hmm. Where they would get every guest who was on that show to listen to like the top five from this week, yeah. and say, you know, hit miss or maybe. Do you like it? Do you not? Eh. And it was think good. Of this boy band. And it was good because they'd have a mixture of genres, mixture of genres, and a mixture of guests. Like sometimes yeah. it was actors, sometimes it was comedians, sometimes it was. What kind of year are we talking? Uh, or decade, even if you the think of mid late nineties. Yeah. So you've probably got I think hit Oasis on there. Hit Missile or... maybe was on Live and Kicking. Because I remember ah. occasionally watching that when SMTV wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> what was that other one? That was C Oh, CD UK. That was on after it, wasn't it? Yeah. It was SMTV Live and then time for me to stop watching because I don't watch Care for the Charts. No, I never watched CDUK. Uh, CDUK, yeah, it wasn't Cat What's a Face. Cat Dealers? Yeah, it was. It was oh, Ant come I'm on. I'm sure it was Ant and Cat, because it was. Yeah, yeah. It was the same set, even. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to get it. Well, in my brain just then, I got it mixed up with SM, SMTV. Yeah, except instead of, like, the wacky cartoon um, mascots, it was just the three of them. It is the 90s, here is, you know, here's Atomic Kitten. It was all, yeah, music, <laughs> music based. So yeah, there's a ton of kids. There's the Spice Girls. Is uh, Sean Ryder? Is he gonna swear? I think my, my favorite one of those was when they had the beautiful, beautiful cause. Yeah. Who nah. were entirely on board with making fun of themselves as part of both portions of this programming block. Yeah, you, I assume you're familiar with that infamous Sean Ryder thing. On what was it called? Uh, thingy, TFI Fridays, Friday with uh, Chris Evans yeah. in the '90s, and they had Sean but Ryder on. Chris I, Evans, but not that one. Yeah, not Captain America. No, I, 
Oh my god, god get over yes, here! You can't beat these tactics! Oh, he's so powerful! You can't beat these tactics! <laughs> he's, he's, he's gone! You cannot beat them! He is not of this world anymore. <laughs> oh, there we go, he came back. <laughs> if anything calls for the Star Trek fight music! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you know, Chief Wiggum's oh. chasing the dog. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or Grandpa's chasing the turtle. <laughs> Either way. Or whatever episode uh, of The Simpsons it was when he's very slowly getting, getting away. away yeah. <laughs> Take him away, toys. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think they more or less made him promise not to swear, and he swore his goddamn <laughs> face off. And it just keeps cutting to Chris Evans looking incredibly nervous. <laughs> so you've got Sean Ryder on here, what do you expect? All I know about Sean Ryder is death. Dare, yeah. Well, he was also in, uh... Happy Mondays? Where the hell is he from? It's one of those Ma um, Manchester bands, right? Yeah. Or am I just thinking of Bez? <laughs> I don't ever want to think about Bez. <laughs> no, not like Bez. <laughs> I'm not Bez! You've got the mor give When they give him the maracas. Yeah. Like, I'm not being Bez. <laughs> I forget if it was Bez or... Whoever it was, it was on Nevermind the Buzzcocks, and they told the story about the song It's Dare. Because that... Okay, well, it's, it's probably supposed, Sean Ryder then. It was supposed to be called It's There, but because that's not how he pronounced it. They, oh. they named the song It's Dare. And the guy who sang the song went, well, now I've learned that. Mm. You learn something new every day, don't you? It's Dare. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they must have re-recorded everyone else's... Di um, dialogue lyrics, because they all say dare as well. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do they? Isn't there Pretty only sure him that do. does? It's mostly him, but well, if I'm remembering the song right, I think other people do say it now and then. Do you like watch it and put up on screen the number of times other people <laughs> say the word dare in that song? <laughs> in between Ding! the subtitling all Just because I don't have enough to do! <laughs> yeah, you're going to be bored at it in this series. Or I could just listen to it and send you the tally. You could. I could put that up. Tally's all right. Don't get that on. Sorry. Play Mass Effect. Okay. Wait, what did you say? I missed it. I said, the same the tally, and I said Tally Zora. Oh, yeah. She died in many of my playthroughs. I have! She only, died in, she only died in one of my playthroughs when I accidentally messed up the entire Rannoch campaign in Mass Effect 3. Yes. Yes. Well, I did that, resulting in the death of her entire race, more or less. Yep. Because the Geth are awesome. <laughs> and I was very much on their side at the time. I See, I was very much not on the Geth side, but I was like, but I can use these against the... I just like Legion a bunch. So, so <laughs> that wasn't what my you, thinking You was. have the option to go and sabotage all these Geth fighters before you do the final mission to basically brainwash the entire Geth species. What a hero! So, what a hero! Um, so I thought... Because I'm going to brainwash the whole species, don't I want as many fighters as possible so I brainwash more of them and thus have a better force to fight the... the, um... the, the Reapers. Ah, oh, yes, Reapers. Um... So this being my thinking, I went ahead and did it. it turns out... no. It turns out if you do that, the fighters just kill all the Quarians. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't give you an option to stop this. At least I don't remember it doing. It's so I'm Tally, like, yeah. no. And yeah, you know, my I think my my shepherd was in a in a romance with Tally, and she, oh, that's she even just, worse. Then. She just God, jumps off a cliff and what? Like, okay. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> See, I didn't like just, Tally all that much, so just I just quit and reload. I, I like. So I was just kind of like, all right. <laughs> The Geth are okay, I'm okay. Uh, I liked your character, how? and I liked your playstyle. I was gonna say, um, how much of this was the game goddamn. frame rate jumping around, versus that's just how this bit of the game looks? You're talking about this now? Yeah, because this doesn't look um, super great. Uh, I can't speak to Mass Effect, I've never played it. Oh my god. I have you disc, never played Mass Effect? I've got disc one on my shelf over there. 
Get on it. And my friend got it for a birthday years ago. He's like, no, play it though. It's amazing. It's wacky space ventures. Absolutely. There's a car. Absolutely like, okay. play that right now. Stop this video. <laughs> <laughs> you can play the whole trilogy. Wait, I don't have to buy the other ones, I guess. I They're know. probably really cheap now. Wait, what? Mass Effect. I've got one and two at home. I've got yeah. one on the shelf over there. It's just sat on the shelf for a bit. What? It's good. It's really good. Play it. If we, if we get this, if we get this finished, we play it. Like, cause Can I'll, you do a one-off of would, Mass Effect? Well, yeah, it's like I would be perfectly willing to play that for half an hour just to be able to show off what I love about Mass Effect 1. Because I love Mass Effect 1. And basically when I played it, I was hooked instantly just because... Look at this game! Uh, best world building and story, but yep. none. Yeah. Not even um, close. Uh, I'm not. A fan, I'm also, not personally a fan of the gameplay, but I know you it's are. Like I, I, I like the gameplay. I love the setting. Like the whole. Like yeah. you just. Like the first thing you do is you walk out onto a planet, and you're here on an alien planet. Okay. It's just here you go. I like that it does. Go have fun. It does something that hasn't been done in gaming for a while, and that it reads your save file in part two and three. And it then does, kind yeah. of weirdly recreates your character. <laughs> yeah. Remember, my hair kept changing from game to game, but just the color, and it drove me up the wall. Oh, it like, makes my please. shepherd look really vain. His dinosaur. There were hair no <laughs> good haircuts in that game. Well, I mean, nah. you have to look like a huge nerd. Unless you've got Femshep, in which case she can have normal hair for some reason. I think I prefer playing as Femshep. The... See, I didn't, but that's just because I really hate hearing Jennifer Hale do anything other than Bastila's voice. See, I was, the reason I like her more is because I think the voice acting is better. Yes, yeah, so I just don't like hearing her sound American. It just sounds just wrong. Cause, it's just because you want the posh. Well, yeah, Fast of a voice. Yeah, it's because, you know, that that's where I knew, knew her from. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just, no, what are you doing, Jennifer Hale? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you See, doing? Weirdly, the first place where I would probably know her is Princess Peach, but her first mm. speaking, speaking role that I recall would be Cortana, so. Yeah, she's in tons of stuff. She is. I just left this fight, by the way. <laughs> and I like that you can do that. Yeah, I thought it was over. You know, just leading... More guys came in, now they just kind of walk with themselves. Just leading down. conga lines of monsters everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, just okay, just go, quickly. go ahead. Um, do you remember the the Wookiee scene in Four Lines, mm. where they're looking for a honey monster? What's a honey monster? A bear. There he is. That was not, not a bear. Really. That was a Wookiee. Not yeah. really. Is it like near the end? It's pretty near the end. Okay. Well, yeah, Cause I, was just, I have a little bit of context for that. Because uh, Alex has got up to that yeah. bit, but I misspelled Wookiee as Wooly. So I've got repeat, <laughs> Wooly is not a bear! Good to know. Uh, but yeah, no. I, but as I'm, no, I don't know so much about the, the appearance of your character, but don't they... Oh, you made difficult decision A in your yes. first game. This is going to come up and we'll talk about it in part two. If only it properly did. Oh, but, okay. um, one to two has got some moments of that where it's just usually little dialogue things or you'll meet a one-off character. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> Not it's okay. again. It's okay. Not it's like okay. this. Not like this. This one wasn't optional. That was fine. <laughs> so we had to make it easy. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so that like that's the idea, and they had it in like a lot of. There were some major decisions that change, pretty big, things. Yeah. The problem is Mass Effect Three. Okay. Because Mass Effect Three renders everything that every choice you made in the last two games utterly moot. Rachnids. Not Amazing. a single choice you made matters. Are they called Rachnids? It's um. The spider things. Yeah, Rachni. Rachni. That was one that enraged a lot of people. Yeah. And I hadn't played one at that point. One was yeah. the last one I played, because lol PlayStation. Yeah. Um, when I was like, oh, I, I didn't really... Exclusive. Didn't, yeah. <laughs> didn't really think anything bro. of it. <laughs> bro, he broke. Put your Master bro. Chief helmet back. <laughs> um, that one was like, flipping out about it. Yeah. And I played one, I was like, oh my goodness. What, what an important decision rendered... Completely useless. Yeah. 
so yeah. What a flawed but really good game 3 is. It's the thing that I will now occasionally use Mass Effect 3 as a verb for <laughs> when something retroactively makes an earlier installment pointless. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> You see, yeah. I tend to go for Donnie Dark Ode in that kind of instance. I've still that's not a that. sequence of. That's not like a series. Oh god, damn. No. Well, no. For example, um, a group we were once part of collectively watched um, the girl that leapt through time. Yeah. And at one point, I said, "Is this movie gonna Donnie Darko itself?" Hmm. I don't think it did. I don't remember the ending. So I'd say that's <laughs> Donnie Darko would be the ending returns everything to status quo. Oh. You, so the ending to Donnie Darko, Donnie goes back to the start of the movie and stops it off. Not, not a bit happens. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. get out of bed, so he dies. Yeah, the whole movie never happens. Yeah. Huh. So yes, yeah, so I wouldn't call that the same thing. Okay. Because this is where the story's continuing, but there have been like elements throughout it saying, "Oh, here are important things happening," and the last one is none of these things were actually important. It's like midichlorians. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Go what on. Are <laughs> what are midichlorians? Or S cells. Uh, As is my understanding, aren't midichlorians nanomachines, son? We have a plot hole to fill. How do we fill it? It's actually more like nanomachines, it's more son. like the plot contrivances in uh, the Phantom Pain, which is parasites. Right? Isn't it more like little creatures or something? Um, yeah, I don't think it's they're robots. Supposed to be they're the they're little God creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Living. In... Judge Render. <laughs> what, why? What have you done? He's no, turned Judge on Render. Us. You were the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> why were you hiding in this? Wait. So I, I choose thing? to believe Invisible Sandman was Judge Render all along. <laughs> Was he also and the he has man. been biding his time until this game when he has killed you twice. <laughs> you thought we were safe, but no. <laughs> he just only just revealed himself. <laughs> oh, dear. Was he the one who wanted to get kicked off the most recent skating thing? Uh, uh, skating thing? What? Um, Dancing on Ice, I think it is. I should probably do this puzzle instead of ignoring it. I forget what it's called in America, but it, America has its own version. All but right. in England, it's like we get celebrities to learn to ice skate, and they do ice skate dancing. And we had an incredibly camp individual who didn't want to do it anymore, but he was really entertaining, so people kept voting him back in. And I want to say that was Judge Rinder. Uh, you're not thinking of Louis Spence. Clank. It could be Louis Spence. Because Judge Rinder. I don't think Judge Render would do that. Or maybe he would, I don't know. Oh, I just remembered who Louis Spence is. Yeah. <laughs> the campus there man. Was a, there was a period where he <laughs> kept on appearing on panel shows. Never lived. He knew nothing. He would spend the entire panel show just dancing. getting up and dancing. And it's, come on, mate. I'm trying to watch a <laughs> panel show. Oh, did you break it? Oh. You need to pull that out of the way. Oh. You were just holding on to nothing. I saw it. Yeah. 